Welcome back to Algo HQ. I'm your host, Ibu Karel, and today I'm going to be doing a response video to the Coin Bureau deep dive breakdown on Algorand released in the past few days. I believe it was on September 25th, 2021. Um, I'd seen a lot of things from the community that expressed a dislike for the information or a disagreement, some discrepancies, inaccuracies. I've watched the video at this point and I'm going to be re-watching it and talking about a few things which I think are incorrect but also giving him credit where it's due. I also want to say I have immense respect for Guy. I can only imagine how much work he puts into all these videos. They're each close to 20 minutes long. He's breaking down a lot of different tech. He has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders to provide valuable information. So that's why I say we should be forgiving of him. But at the same time, we have to be cognizant of what's true and what's false and what's opinion and what's fact. So with that being said, let us jump in. In pure proof of stake, relay nodes randomly select a participation node to propose a block. That is not correct. What actually happens is each algo token that is staked in a wallet for participation has a chance to volunteer itself, not get picked by a centralized source or a relay node. The token itself actually does the calculation individually. So it's not like the tokens are being chosen by the relay nodes. They're actually each rolling the dice on their own and whichever thousand out of that 10 billion win the cryptographic lottery will be in that block of validators. The likelihood that a participation node is selected is partially proportional to how much algo it has staked. It's not partially proportional, it's directly proportional to how much algo it has staked. I don't know why he said partially. Running a relay node currently requires permission from and coordination with the Algorand Foundation. Hence why Algorand only has around 100 relay nodes. So about this, at this point, which is September of 2021, anybody can launch a relay node and run it. As for the 100 relay nodes point, I have to give it to Guy. He is correct going off the information that's available online right now. If you look up how many Algorand relay nodes are there, it says there are about 100. That's the information he could find. I encourage the Algorand Foundation or Algorand Inc. to update this info and it would actually be great if we had a live um, ticker of how many relay nodes there are on the network at any given time. Algorand also began a pilot program to allow community members to run relay nodes and successful candidates should be announced any day now. So if he knows this information that more relay nodes are about to come online. I don't know why he would say there are only 100 right now and that is a centralizing problem. I guess it's a little confusing. There's also a company called Hypernet, which is now allowing people to deploy a relay node on Algorand with a single click. They don't actually have to get their own computer or their own computational system to run the node. They can use Hypernet, which will start to run the relay node on a server in a server bank. As you can see, the price pattern we're seeing now is eerily similar to the one we saw back in February. If the same scenario plays out, Algo should slowly climb back up to the $2.30 range over the next two months before being smacked back down by Algorand selling schemes. I can see where Guy is coming from with this point. You have to admit that there are some similarities of the price action from February and now. Again, I don't really like to talk about price on Algo HQ. I think it's a little cringe. If you're here on the channel, you probably know the price. So why do I need to talk about it? But if he's talking about it, I'll make a quick comment on it. The situation in the Algorand ecosystem is not the same as it was back in February. Now, multiple months later, there's so much DeFi and activity and use case that makes the Algorand token a lot more valuable to hold. One, you have DEXs coming up, DeFi, lending, NFTs, governance, and accelerated vesting is gonna end soon. These are all catalysts for why the ALGO token is becoming more and more valuable to hold because you can do so many applications of decentralized finance with it instead of back in February when there was almost no use case for the token besides staking it for those rewards. 
So you can't blame people if they wanted to take some profits and they had nowhere else to put the algos. Now there's Yieldly, NFTs, you can put it into governance. Tiny Man, an AMM DEX is launching in the next month. AlgoFi is going to launch. Algo DEX is going to launch. Algo Mint is going to launch. At least eight different ways in which you can use your algo and that number will probably go exponentially up over the next few months. So the situation is not exactly the same as it was in February. The good news is that Algorand's terrible tokenomics make it much easier to forecast Algo's future price action. I also feel like Guy is projecting a bit of his own emotional spin on the story. He's not an economics expert. To call the economic plan of some of the world's top uh, economists terrible, it's not like Guy has really the credentials to, to break everything down and call it terrible. I'm not out here calling them impeccable or incredible. I'm also not out here calling them terrible. The improvements AVM 1.0 will bring are honestly a bit too technical for me, so I'll summarize them using a popular song lyric. Harder, better, faster, stronger, I mean, what do, what do I need to say about this? This is this is not exactly the deepest fundamental analysis that he could have provided. <laughs> so this means the Algorand blockchain is growing at an unsustainable rate, and this will only get worse when larger block sizes and faster block times are introduced. Guy has a good point here. He highlights the pace at which the Algorand ecosystem is growing and the file size of the chain is becoming larger and larger all the time. That's a good sign for growth of the ecosystem for sure. It's yet to be proven if this is, as he says, unsustainable. A one terabyte file is really not that much in the grand scheme of things. It's quite affordable to host a one terabyte file. It's affordable to host a two terabyte file. All I'm saying is to label the growth as unsustainable, maybe a bit anecdotal if he hasn't crunched the numbers and done the math to determine if it actually is unsustainable. Zero knowledge proofs will only work until they don't. And if there's no full history of Algorand lying around anywhere to recover from a critical blockchain issue, that could be the end of Algorand. What does he mean by zero knowledge proofs will only work until they don't? He's just saying that. He has no evidence to back that claim up. If I'm also going to trust one person with zero knowledge proofs, it'll probably be the guy who invented them, Silvio. Now, another concern I have about Algorand relates to something Algorand COO Sean Ford said during a recent interview with Coindesk. Quote, we have the ability to add features that financial institutions have become used to around account freezing, clawbacks, minimizing risk. Now, I might just be hearing things, but this sounds like Algorand Inc. holds the master keys to the Algorand blockchain and won't hesitate to use them if it's asked to do so. What Sean was saying is that if you create a tokenized asset on Algorand, you can put it in your settings when you create it if you want to implement a freeze or a clawback feature. It doesn't mean that the Algorand Foundation or Algorand themselves can reach into a wallet and pickpocket an asset. If I was an institution and I was making a bank deed into a security, I would need for my clients some type of guarantee that if one party doesn't reach their end of the deal, the asset can be returned. That's not possible if you don't have an ability to program that into the smart contract. So what Sean was articulating in that interview is that if you are creating a tokenized asset on Algorand, you can implement those features. If the relay nodes containing Algorand's full transaction history are destined to be directed by the Algorand Foundation and its affiliates, is Algorand truly decentralized and secure? Algorand themselves don't run the relay nodes. They're independent entities that support the network. In addition, why would they ever do that? that would be completely counterproductive and destroy their whole project. Even though the Algorand Foundation might ease off on its algo sales now that it's received some fiat funding, the fact that it offered up 150 million of its own algos for DeFi development suggests otherwise. I actually spoke to Pablo Yabo, 
the CEO of Rand Labs who created my Algo wallet and AlgoExplorer.io about this exact subject, the way he described it to me was that if the Algorand Foundation and Algorand Inc. have a lot of the original algos, they have no reason to hold them. They need to use these algos to fund their developers and give people building blockchain D apps an incentive to come to Algorand and work through funding. I also think that Algorand's governance has less to do with decentralization and more to do with artificially increasing the demand for Algo to offset some of the damage being done to its price by its other policies. I also disagree with this take. The governance over time will become more and more important for running the system as the tokens become more distributed and decentralized. In addition, you can still withdraw the algos if you need to, like he said in the video. So it doesn't create false scarcity because everybody could technically take their algos out of the governance if they wanted to. What it does incentivize is participation, keeping the value on chain. It's important to turn the lens on other projects as well. EIP-1559 is exactly a scarcity mechanism for Ethereum. That brings us to the end of the video, or at least the end of what I thought was addressable in the video. I have, like I said, a lot of respect for Guy. He does a lot of work on these videos. The rest of the video is actually quite positive about Algorand and all the partnerships and groundwork that they're laying at the time. With that being said, if you do see this guy, please reach out if you wanna have a discussion about it or talk about it further. I think it's smart to be interested in multiple projects in crypto because Algorand cannot be the only winner in the space. Neither can Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cardano or Solana or anything like that. If you're watching this, thanks for watching. This has been Algo HQ. Peace.